you want to know how to catch this much yo bass in a day, stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back to another video of GN Fishing Adventures. Today, I'm out on the water with my friend uh, Drake. And we're snapping uh, yellow bass. Stay tuned. Subscribe and leave a like if you like these videos. Okay, the two lakes that we have been targeting yellow bass on are Sistin and Bud so far. and. Just to show you an idea, this is this red line around the basin is where we normally target. It's where the brake lines meet the basin, and that's usually where these fish are cruising along. So once we get out on the lake, we get close to the basin line, and and we start drilling a matrix of holes to kind of own in on where the depths are, but also to get out a little bit into the basin and up the brake line to about 10 feet. That's where the fish are usually cruising at, and uh, once you get there put the depth finder down you start marking fish right away that's when you you get on them and you start fishing as you can see we're kind of right on the edge of the basin here line here off the current brake you're off the brake line and drilling a bunch of holes we don't have a pan optics so we have to kind of find them but just stay mobile and and get on those fish and then use something that's going to get down there fast because like i said if they don't see something they like they keep on moving but once you get them, get them there, they'll stick around for an hour on end. Rule of thumb, if you uh, jig about a hundred times and don't get any fish to show up, it's time to move on. They're just not, not going to be coming. If you want these fish in big numbers, you got to stay on the school. Oh, yep. And there they are. Okay, open your bail. Problem with hole hopping in nine degrees is the eyelets do not like it. Yeah, no kidding. I jig this fish, I'm gonna go get my pole. They tend to like that pilky rig better. them completely different than the yellow bass. How how big do those have to be first? A lot bigger than that. Just putting their lips on it. Yeah, I got you. If I can find my reel. 
Big now. Let's see how many we can catch here. A few minutes. Had to keep moving around until I finally got on on top of a school. And like I said, just catching that perch seemed to bring them in. Because there wasn't any really anything here but one fish when I set up. Caught that perch and now there's about 50 of them down there. Like I said before. They like these shucks lures, gets it down to them fast, they keep their attention and just load it up with bait whenever whenever you run out. Even if there's one little wiggler on there, they'll still bite. That's another thing, I like to keep above the school and stick with the aggressive fish. That one perch got them all triggered off. Yeah. You know the wigglers. I'm running out. They're starting to get a little finicky. This is a technique we learned on East Okabaji back in the heydays of yellow bass over there. I mean, haven't been there for years now. I'm sure there's still plenty of yellow bass. Maybe we'll make an episode there too. Just get some other people on these fish. Because they taste good, we want to thin them out as best as possible. But if you see the size of schools in this lake, we got a lot of work to do this winter. Just a shameless plug, we're talking about having a Fairmont Yellow Bass Fishing Tournament where we just kind of put the hurting on them for a day and just see how many we can get. Kind of interested in that and hope it progresses. <coughs> Got them bait. Commission folks. Except for the one that's on the hook right now. 
over since the last time. Yeah, see, now I gotta get a wax for him. Hopefully the fish stick around, but I'm telling you, red spikes. More fish, faster results. I'm sure they would take the white spikes too. You just want a firmer body. It isn't going to fall off all the time. I try to hook the wax for him a few times just so it stays on longer, but it's not working. Get him. I'll get you one more and then I'm going to put you in with the kids because I'm not the star of this show. I just drive them here. Plus the wind's picking up a little bit so all that background noise isn't going to be good for you guys. Seeing them on the camera? No, nope. perch. It's old. Well, that's how the oh, big, big school started before. Oh, there's a big, giant <laughs> school down there. All right, guys. So we've had a lot of questions about what size fish are in here, and and a lot of them are on the small size. But we are getting some bigger ones. Just figured uh, we'll measure a couple here for you, and so you can see what we're getting. Well, uh, we'll start with one on the small side. This is about as small as they get. And we're looking at about six and a half inches. So there's not real big, but every little nugget counts. And we got a lot of people asking for fish that can't get out here. So we're keeping as many as we can. Now this one's kind of bending up, but he's in the eight and a half eight and three quarters range it's kind of hard to measure them when they're frozen they're a little bit shorter and g-man's got one over there that probably even a little bit bigger eight. just yeah it'll be if you, if you could pinch the tail it'd be nine inches so there's some real hogs in here too but they're few and far between when you got all these little aggressive six and a half to seven and a half inch fish so well, I tell you, we'll, uh, we'll show you what the fillets look like and what they look like when you're breading them and, and eating them. And they're real good. They're good bite-sized pieces for the kids. So Not a bad deal as long as you're willing to clean them. School disappeared for the first time in about 40 minutes. So that's just how fast they'll disappear, but they will stick around if you keep them busy. Those small yellow bass sure do make some tasty bite-sized chunks. 